Today's video is on Florence, Italy, arguably one of the most beautiful cities I've ever been to. And it just happens to be surrounded by all of Tuscany. We loved Florence. And I got all my camera equipment stolen in Florence at the end of our Italy vacation, our 10 day dream Italy vacation that we had saved up for. My camera equipment, along with all my photos, the whole trip, gone. Gone. So if you see any of my Italy videos, this was a GoPro that was attached to my wrist. That's all I have left. So much footage was lost. So many pictures are lost. All right, back on track. So here are our suggestions if you are taking kids to Florence, Italy on a budget. I'm gonna go through this as if you're spending a day in Florence, but there's so, so much more to do, and I'm gonna give you a few other suggestions. If you are driving, you need to know about Florence's ZTL zones, which means there are zones that you are not even allowed to enter. There are plenty of maps online. It was very easy for us to park outside of it, but just be aware so that you don't get a ticket. So here is what I would suggest. Get your walking shoes on, and here is how you're going to see the heart of Florence in a day. You can start out at the Uffizi Gallery. We did not go inside. There's famous paintings. If I ever go back by myself, I would love to go in. But just walking through the outdoor corridor, there's statue after statue of all these famous Florentines. And this will take you over to the Piazza della Signora. The Piazza della Signora is almost like a statue gallery, just all outdoors. There are a couple of fabulous fountains. There's a whole covered area with different sculptures. There's a recreation of the David. It's a beautiful piazza. Go through there, enjoy that, and then wander over to what I would argue is the most gorgeous building I have ever viewed in my entire life. So you'll go to the Piazza del Duomo. There you will find the Florence Cathedral and the Florence Baptistry, the big famous dome, and the colors, the architecture. It is huge. It is stunning. While you're there, because we always love our gelato, really close by is a gelato place called Grom. And yes, you know, it's gluten-free, made in-house, absolutely delicious. There's all kinds of little stops and shops there where you could grab a coffee or a gelato, but get it, sit, take it all in. It is beautiful. But watch your stuff because this is where my camera equipment got stolen. Here's the rule of thumb. I let my guard down. I have traveled a bunch. I've never had my camera stolen, but I let my guard down. Do not let your camera or anything valuable not be touching you. That's all I'll say. Okay, moving on. If you want to see the David, it actually was free for the kids, and I believe only seven or eight euro for us to get into the Galleria dell'Accademia. This tells you just how few tourists were there when we were there. Because of the whole COVID situation, we literally walked up and bought our tickets. And anyone who has been there knows you need to usually book it months out in advance. So definitely book up ahead. But the David is just fabulous in person. And having the kids be free is a huge incentive. It's not a huge place. We still were really glad we went in. Near there is an incredible place you at least need to step into. It's a little um, coffee shop slash flower shop slash... Uh, anthropology shop slash restaurant. It's called La Menagerie. And it was a bit pricey, but you have got to go in to see this place. I actually had some gorgeous, gorgeous photos that I took in there because it was like I wanted to run a whole fashion photo shoot there. From there, you can walk to the Strozzi Palace and you can walk in to at least see the beautiful architecture in the courtyard. It's an art gallery. We did not pay to go in, but it was on the way to the next thing, so I'm glad we at least stepped in. And then head towards the bridge that's called Ponto Viejo. It is this very old bridge with very old shops. The actual architecture of the bridge dates back to medieval times. From there, you can walk to the Forta di Belvedere, which was free. Lovely views of the Chianti Mountains and Florence. You could get a pretty cheap cup of coffee there. And at some other point, I would really drive up to this next spot. Go ahead and drive up to the Piazza del Michelangelo. Uh, we did it at dusk so we could see the sunset. It's stunning over the city of Florence, and it'll give you panoramic views. Like I said, you are in the middle of Tuscany. So I'm going to give you one other thing that we really, really enjoyed doing while we were there. We had stayed in the 
Tuscan countryside at a B&B, which was great. And it's a little bit of a drive, but we went to the Tenuzza di Capizzano Winery. And we were so glad we did. This winery is over a thousand years old. They take you and take a tour through the historic winery. They let your kids come along for free. Adults for the classic tour were 20 euro a piece, which wasn't bad with wine tasting included. You got to hear about what happened when Nazis were there, how they protected their wine. Got to see this beautiful winery and all the views. And that as a nice little touch when they were doing their wine tasting with us, they had some juice for the kids and it was a highlight for me. There are so many things in Florence. I feel like Florence needs a redo for me partially because of the bummer of having all my stuff stolen. So I would love for you to add to this list because I'm sure some of you that have visited are sitting there thinking of that one thing I have forgotten to add. So please go ahead, comment below, tell me what other people need to know that they should hit up when they're in Florence and then follow us on social media and please subscribe to the channel and we will see you next time for more of our travel adventures. Up YouTube. Hey YouTube. Hey YouTube. I'm just getting on here to let you know. YouTube. Hey YouTube. Hi there YouTube. Hey YouTube. I'm just getting on here to let you know that we are taking a break from these videos at the end of June because we have summer travel and you can join along with us over on my Instagram account in real time. We're going to be going places like Croatia, Bosnia, Morocco, and more. And we would love to have you join us. We will be back here in the fall with more videos.